Working on the debt side of the commercial real estate industry will give you a very different experience than working pretty much anywhere else in this business, primarily because of what the main focus of a lender is. While equity investors will typically prioritize maximizing returns relative to risk, lenders are primarily focused on capital preservation and the career paths and opportunities available in this part of the industry are very reflective of that focus. So if you're watching this and thinking about pursuing a career on the debt side of the commercial real estate industry, in this video, I wanna walk through with some of the biggest pros and some of the biggest cons I've seen when people go this route and who a career in lending might be the best fit for. So when talking about debt side roles in this video, I'm primarily referring to jobs where you'd be working directly for a commercial real estate lender, where your main responsibilities are to either find investors and developers that need a source of capital or to evaluate deals that borrowers present to you. And one of the biggest benefits of these roles, especially for people who are new to the industry and aren't quite sure where they want to specialize, is that you'll typically be exposed to a variety of different property types and geographic markets in a very short period of time. When you start out in a lending role at a bank, insurance company, or even a private lender, you'll typically be working on deals across the multifamily, retail, office, and industrial sectors located in multiple different cities and states throughout the country, which can give you a much better sense of what types of deals you like working on most and where you see the most opportunity from a location perspective. And this tends to be really hard to do when you're working for an investment or development firm, since the vast majority of these companies only focus on one or maybe two asset classes at most in just a small handful of geographic markets, meaning that if you take a job and then realize you have no interest in the property type you're working on, you most likely need to move to a different company altogether just to be exposed to something else. Working for a lender will also give you the opportunity to see how a variety of different investment and development firms operate and make investment decisions. And if you plan to build your own real estate portfolio at some point in the future, sitting in investment committee meetings and presenting opportunities to senior leadership within a lending firm will give you an inside look into what lenders care about most when considering funding a deal. Another big benefit of working in lending that tends to be especially true at insurance companies and banks is that job stability tends to be really high even at the analyst level. Insurance companies will generally source capital from insurance premiums and banks will generally source capital from deposits, neither of which tend to dry up completely during down cycles in the market. And this means that these firms will usually have access to capital in a variety of different market conditions, which allows them to continue to make loans and retain employees even when investment sales activity is relatively low. And unlike equity investments that in most cases can be held almost indefinitely, the vast majority of commercial real estate loans only have terms of three to 10 years at the most, which means that even if owners aren't selling and investors aren't buying, there's still going to be business on the lending side of the industry. This often leads to more consistent, predictable revenue than you would see at an investment or development firm that's heavily dependent on deal volume and current market conditions, which can ultimately result in a smaller chance of being laid off when transaction activity slows down. Now, another benefit of working on the lending side of the industry, which is especially relevant for people who are getting into this business primarily because they're interested in finance, is that these roles typically remove you from a lot of the day-to-day -day blocking and tackling associated with owning and operating commercial real estate. When you're working in acquisitions or asset management, you're very likely going to be spending a lot of your time doing things like working with third party contractors, negotiating commercial leases with prospective tenants, or working with city officials to get development projects approved. But in a lending role, you can focus almost exclusively on the capital markets and the finance aspect of investing in commercial real estate while relying on the investor or developer directly to handle those projects. Now, working on the lending side of the industry does have its drawbacks and one of the biggest things you'll want to consider is that in exchange for that stability i talked about earlier on in this video in most cases you'll have to give up some potential income upside a lot of banks and insurance companies that lend on commercial real estate are huge established organizations that tend to offer strong benefits and a stable salary but relatively small bonus percentages when compared to jobs in acquisitions or even sometimes asset management 
you will typically see more performance-based compensation as you move into more senior level roles within these firms where you're the one that's directly responsible for sourcing new business. But if you're working in any sort of analytical or operational capacity, bonuses in these types of jobs are typically pretty weak. Now, on the bright side of this, big companies also tend to be very fully, if not overly staffed, which can lead to more manageable work weeks and a better work-life balance overall. But if you consider yourself entrepreneurial and you wanna have more control over your income, working in lending at an insurance company or a bank usually isn't going to be the right fit. Another downside to think about if you decide to go the debt route is that most lenders will primarily rely on the borrower to handle the majority of the financial modeling required to analyze deals, which means that in these roles, you're typically not going to be exposed to things like creating long-term cash flow projections, running IRR calculations, or building equity waterfall models, which are all things you'll need to be able to do if you wanna transition onto the equity side of the business at some point in the future. At banks and insurance companies, most of the underwriting is focused on LTV, LTC, DSCR, and debt yield metrics, which are relatively simple calculations that look primarily at current property value and current property income, and you're typically not going to be creating dynamic pro forma models and making cash flow projections over an extended period of time. Now, obviously this isn't going to be true in every single scenario. And if you're working for something like a debt fund, your day-to-day -day responsibilities will often include some more complex modeling. But in general, if you're looking for a way to tighten up your technical skill set quickly, the modeling you'll learn at insurance companies or banks tends to be pretty basic. Ultimately, if you're early in your career and don't know where you wanna specialize yet, you wanna focus almost exclusively on finance and the capital markets, and you consider yourself relatively risk averse and value a strong work-life balance, the debt side of the industry could be a great place to start your career in commercial real estate. And if you wanna learn more about real estate debt modeling, real estate equity modeling, or the real estate investment analysis process overall, and you wanna make sure you're prepared for a potential modeling case study that might be given to you during the interview process at commercial real estate lending or investment firms, make sure to check out our all-in-one membership training platform, Breaking a CRE Academy. A membership to the Academy will give you instant access to over 120 hours of video training on real estate financial modeling and analysis. You'll get access to hundreds of practice Excel interview exam questions, sample acquisition case studies, and you'll also get access to the Break into CRE Analyst Certification Exam, which covers topics like real estate pro forma and development modeling, commercial real estate lease modeling, equity waterfall modeling, and many other real estate financial analysis concepts that will help you prove to employers that you have what it takes to tackle the responsibilities of an analyst or associate at a top real estate firm. And if you like this video and want to see more content on the pros and cons of different career paths within commercial real estate, make sure to hit the like button and let me know. And let me know in the comments which part of the industry you'd like to see covered in more detail in a future video on the channel. As always, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos like this every single week. And I'll see you in the next video.